Thank you for tuning in to this 27th installment of Heart to Heart. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and I am always happy to know that the body of Christ is tuning in to another live broadcast to be blessed by the word of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you've got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Revelation, the second chapter, verse 17, and I'm going to pray before I get started. Brother Jeff, God bless you, my brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I just thank you for this 27th episode of Heart to Heart. I thank you that for every Monday that you've had given me so far with this program, you've blessed me to go live with the broadcast. Father, I thank you that lives have been changed. And Lord, I thank you for the lives that are going to be changed today, the sick bodies that are going to be healed, the bound that are going to go free. In Jesus' name, for every soul that is going to come into the kingdom that belongs to you, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Angel, God bless you. Pastor Mike, God bless you. I love you, brother. In the name of Jesus, amen, hallelujah, Lord. You know, I tell you what, I'm reading from the book of Revelations today. A lot of pastors, a lot of people that are just lay people that get saved, they're lay, they're regular folk. They ain't pastors, but they try to avoid the book of Revelation because so many people say it's one of the scariest books they've ever read. But it's really not a scary book if you look at it the way it was intended to be written. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ, not the revelation of the Antichrist, okay? We're not interested in the bad guy. We're interested in our Redeemer. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Sister White, God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. It's not scary for you. Amen. Because you know where you're going. That's right. And I tell you what, a lot of people will read the beginning part of the book of Revelation, say, oh, I can't understand it, and they'll cut it off. My great granddaddy, who was a prophet and a preacher, he would say, if you're reading from the book of Revelations, you've got a book on your hands. Because a lot of people try their very best to avoid it. Amen. But it's a part of the love letter of God. This whole Bible right here is a promise and a love letter from the Father in heaven. Melissa, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go and look at one of the promises that the Father gives us through the Son. Amen. Actually, let's go to verse 16 from Revelation chapter 2, verse 16 through 17. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving except he that receiveth it. Amen. We're going to talk about the white stone today. Amen. You know, we hear about the great white throne. Let's talk about this great white stone. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let me ask you this. Are you willing to accept what God has to say on the matter of the white stone? Amen. Let me ask you that before we even get started. Because if you're not willing to accept it, just shut me off right now. But if you are then bear with me for the next few moments because this heart to heart is on the Father's heart today. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. In the ancient Greek games, the athletes at the end of the championship, at the end of their athletic career, would receive a white stone with a name on it. And that white Stone, according to scholars, says that that person has now retired from the race. They, they over, 
overcome the Olympic Games. And that's what he just said. To him who overcometh, to him that finishes his race, I will give him to eat of the fresh manna. The new revelation of the Spirit, the, the things that the Father has promised that's been hidden, even because people were not able to receive it at the time when it was, that's why it was hidden. But let me tell you something, part of that hidden manna is a part of the missing books of the Bible. Amen? Some of that hidden manna is found in the missing books of the Bible. Not everybody can read the missing books of the Bible. Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But for those that can, those that receive it, I, I think it was Sister White that told me the other day, it is the heart of kings to seek out a matter. And I know I probably said that wrong, but if you'll just write that down, Sister White, I'd appreciate it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, the promises of God that have been hidden. And will I give him a white stone. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Now that white stone ties in, by the way, to the book of Melchizedek. And it ties in to our... It, it ties in to the time that we're in uh, reading about at that point where it's talking about a reward. It's really a reward from the Lord saying you've ran the race. You've completed the journey. That's what he was saying. That is a reward the Bible said that God is and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Glory to God. Are you diligently seeking the king is what I'm asking you today. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. But in the Greek games, the athletes, after they would go into retirement, would be allowed to receive a white a precious white stone, and it would have a name on it. Remember, at the end of our race, by His grace, we're given a new name. We're given a name that represents the victory and the conquering power of the cross, that we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me go ahead and go a little bit further now. It was as if the person was receiving a memorial plaque saying you've ran the race. Good job. It's finished. You ain't got to run no more. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. They would find rest at the end of their journey. Like the people, well, let me tell you something. He said, strive to enter into that rest. Amen? Strive to enter into the rest. Force yourself. Strive means to force yourself. Continue, make yourself rest in the kingdom. Begin to rest in God. He said, it is finished. He never said, you are finished. Somebody come on, amen. He never said, you are finished. He said, it is finished, amen. Praise your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus, amen. He said, it is finished. The law and the prophets have been completed. Everything that he was supposed to do, he done at the cross. Amen, that's right, Sister Angel. He or even she that endureth to the end shall be saved. That word saved is sozo, meaning completely lacking nothing. Beverly, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to be here much longer before the body of Christ on this heart to heart broadcast today. I just want you to understand something. His people did not 
enter into their rest, the people that were supposed to go into their rest, because of murmuring and complaining and doubt and fear, they did not enter their rest. The only two that got to enter into the promised land was Joshua, who was 101 years old when he took the battle of Jericho, according to rabbis, and Caleb, who was 98. Caleb was a 98-year-old man, and Joshua was 101 years old, and, and Caleb even said when they were complaining and saying, I just don't think we can do this, oh Lord. This is a big mountain, as Pastor Justin was saying yesterday. Is this, this is such a big mountain. I mean, God parted the Red Sea and he done all this stuff, but I just don't know. This looks even bigger than what we can fathom. And God said, because of your unbelief, you're all going to die, and I'm going to let these two enter in. Because Caleb said, give me my mountain. I have lived these 80-something years. I, I, I think he was 80, not 90. He was 80, and Joshua was 101. In his 80s, he said, I have lived these 80-something years. I have lived this. I have walked around this property with y'all. And I have claimed it and stood on this. I ain't got another 80 years, he said. Give me my mountain. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sister White. Proverbs 25 and 2. It is the glory of God to counsel a thing, to, to conceal a thing, but it is the honor of kings to search out a matter. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Look at that. Why are the hidden books hidden? It's because we are to search them out. Those things that be of God. You've got to take the good with the bad. You've got to examine it and see if it lines up with the Spirit. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Let me just go a little bit further into here. 1 Corinthians 9 and 25 talks about entering in to rest at the end of the battle, at the end of the triathlon of your life. Let's just go there real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Oh, I hope somebody's having a good time with me today. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. Amen. And every man that striveth, there you go, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. What does he mean? He said in the triathlons, in the Olympics games, he's talking about the Olympic games. He was at the Olympic games. Paul was there. He was there at the Greek games. And he looked and said, well, this could be applied to the gospel. He said, they're running to receive an, a corruptible crown. That crown was made of uh, flowers. And that crown would be faded away one day. They was running for something that was temporal. It was a temporary glory. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But he said, we pursue an incorruptible crown. We're striving. We are forcing ourselves to keep going like an athlete training for a race, Paul said. And we are to continue to strive to enter into the rest of God. 
We got to keep running this race no matter what. We must keep running this race with grace. Philippians 3 and 14. Galatians 5 and 17. Philippians 3 and 14 says, I run this race. And, and he said, I, I'm continuing to run this race. I'm not giving up. I'm going after the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Let me tell you something. Even if we fall, we got to keep getting up and keep running the race for God. Galatians 5 and 7, he says, oh, you foolish Galatians who tripped you. You were running so good, but who tripped you and got you to quit running this race for God? The Bible says, Proverbs 24, 16, if a righteous man falls seven times, he gets back up and he keeps on running. Now, one more important thing, really important here to remember, is if we do fall, we again rise. Isaiah 40, 31. Isaiah 40 and 30 says, your young men will surely fall. And he, he, he's telling what's going to happen because of our flesh. We're going to fall. But if we wait on the Lord, we shall renew our strength. We will mount up with wings as eagles. We will run and not be weary. We will walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, will you run? That's the question the Lord told me to propose to his people today. Or have you fallen from your run. We must learn to run again. The race with grace. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Seeing we are surrounded about by a great cloud of witnesses. Let us run the race. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. Letting go of the things which so easily beset us. Casting off the weights that so easily beset us. Amen. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's right. But the word of the Lord is unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Isaiah 28 and 3. For precept must be upon precept. Line upon line. Here a little, there a little. Isaiah 28 and 13 and 10 and 13. Okay, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. He said, you're going to fall. When you try to do it on your own, you are going to fall. But if you'll fall back into the arms of Jesus. Let me tell you something. The Bible said that the clay fell apart in the hands. Lord have mercy. The clay fell apart in the hands of the master. It wasn't that the master failed. It wasn't that the master made a mistake. It was that the clay, there was something wrong with the stability within the clay, and the clay fell apart. And when the clay fell apart, it fell apart in the hands of the master. The best place for your life to fall into place is to let yourself fall apart in the master's hands. Ooh, Jesus. Are y'all hearing what I'm preaching today? Amen. Isaiah 28 and 10 is where that scripture was. Here a little, there a little. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now will you run, or have you fallen from your run? We must learn to run again. Hebrews thirteen, uh, Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Listen to me. I'm almost done, y'all. I'm closing with this. 
at the Bema seat of Christ. The Bema seat is where we all must appear that have followed Jesus Christ. The great white throne judgment is for those that did not make it to the kingdom. Those that died without Jesus Christ. They will be judged at the great white throne. But us, we are judged at the Bema seat of Christ. Amen. That's right. We need to run and not look back. That's right. Exactly. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let me just go ahead and read to you just a little bit further. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 10 through 11. He said we must all appear. The born-again believer must appear at the Bema seat. What is the Bema? Let me deal with that. It's not, it's not what you think it is, okay? A lot of people think, oh, well, it's where God's going to pass judgment on all the people that made it in to see if they get in. Well, wait a minute. If you appear at the Bema seat, you already in, baby. You're going to receive rewards or losses for what you've done in your flesh. But you're going to receive rewards or losses, none the same. You're not going to be thunder and lightning and all this other stuff coming down. No, the Bema is what Paul was referring to in 1 Corinthians when he's talking about the triathlons and the Olympics. See, the Bema seat. Amen, that's right. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 says, Know ye not that you which run in a race run all but to receive the prize. So run that you may obtain. Amen, that's right. That's why we're running to obtain heaven. We're to obtain Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you something. Your good deeds, whether they be your deeds, whether they be good or evil, what you've done for yourself and what you've done for God, will be judged at the bema seat, and that is where a athlete would be put to receive rewards or receive losses. They would get lesser medals or greater medals at the bema. Glory to God, Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It is really what it says, a platform. One level's a little higher than the other, but there's always that center level. That's what we're running for to receive that center level, the greatest prize, which is Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I run forward to the mark of the high calling, Paul says. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Everything I preach tonight, or this afternoon is tied into the white stone. It's also tied to the white pearl in the book of Hallelujah Jesus. The book of Melchizedek written by Father Abraham it's turned into the white it, it refers to the white pearl a particular the Bible says we are a peculiar stone. Amen. Second Peter 1 Peter 2 and 9, we are a peculiar stone. But I want to share something with you, my friends. The Bible says that there are 12 stones to the foundation of heaven. Isn't it interesting that the name of the 12 disciples is what God built his kingdom with? So even Shenda, Reboshi, Bara Kandoroboshai. Isn't it interesting that what God the Father built his kingdom with? Jesus is the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. The foundation of the kingdom of heaven had the name on of the twelve stones. The, uh, the, the name of the 12 disciples that built through their life the kingdom of heaven. Excuse me. So it's interesting to me 
that before time began, God set their names in place. Even the names, She, Ramo, Ko, Sharabasanda, that he would call them. Simon, he put Peter. James and John, he put the sons of thunder. <laughs> he, he put their names on the foundation of heaven before he ever called for them. Before they ever knew him, he called to them and wrote their names under the foundation of heaven's stones. Whoa, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory, Lord. Amen. First Peter 2 and 9, we are peculiar stones. Remember I said that everything ties back into Melchizedek's book that was written by Father Abraham. Listen to this, y'all. Don't cast your pearls before swine. Matthew 7 and 6. Don't cast what belongs to the kingdom to those that won't receive it, to those unclean Gentilic people that will not receive it, that are just as lost as they was from the fall of the Adamic covenant. When I say Adamic covenant, I mean Adam's covenant with God. For you that didn't know what that was, amen. But let me say this, what pearls are before God. Pearls are profound. It is profound kingdom wisdom from the Lord. Profound revelation and insight. The Bible speaks about how the kingdom of heaven is as a pearl. Lord have mercy. In the book of Matthew, he refers to the kingdom of heaven as a great pearl. Lord have mercy. And the rich man sold everything he had to go out and get that pearl. But don't throw the kingdom of heaven to those that are unclean, to those that will not receive what you have for them. This is what rabbis teach now. They, If you throw a pearl at them, they will not know the difference between a pearl and a stone and will rise and attack the person who is bringing the wisdom from God, they'll think, oh my gosh, he's the enemy. And they're going to try to attack you because they think you've got something that is not from God. They think that, oh, that, that, did, mm, I got to gnash at them. Then spiritual hogs of hell will now snout and gnash at you. Well, let me explain something to you. They'll kill you. They'll rip you to shreds. These are wild hogs the Bible's talking about. These hogs will tear you up and rip you up and spit you out like last year's garbage dump. Listen, because they consider you a threat in their life. People that do not want to follow Jesus Christ will consider you a threat and they will attack you verbally, physically, spiritually, any way they can to try to destroy what you have to offer. That's why Jesus said, don't cast your pearl before swine. Don't cast the kingdom of heaven outward to those that will not receive it. He said, you'll be destroyed and they will trample you. Un they'll, they'll trample your life, your, your gift from God. They'll trample it to death underfoot. Maybe some of you today are saying, Brother H.R., I needed to hear this. Amen. That's right. Fural wild pigs with no law and love of God within them. That's right. Those are the ones that will trample you under feet. They're the ones that will come against the word of God coming from the mouth of the prophet of God. The man or woman of God sends the word. They go home and begin to... You know, let me tell you something. The Bible speaks about how we are to be careful not to create a stumbling block for a child. 
What could be a stumbling block when you go home and you sitting around the dinner table running your mouth about how you didn't like the man or woman of God for that day, that they done something that you didn't like, and that person says in their heart, well, I'll never go back to that church. You just put a stumbling block in the path of a child. Lord Jesus, we must be very, very careful, my friends, how we address the body of Christ. Amen. The Bible says we are not to put our mouth on anybody. He said, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. That don't just mean physically, that means spiritually with your mouth. Because the Bible says that a lot of people like to devour in the church. Paul said that, that people like to devour in the church. They like to go and bite and tear and snare. Let me tell you something. I love the sheep. I, I love being a shepherd over sheep. But I've learned one thing in all my years of preaching. Sheep bite. <laughs> Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. They bite and they bite hard. Lord Jesus, amen. We need to be careful, though, when we feed the sheep, not to let the sheep bite us. You heard the saying, don't, don't bite the hand that feeds you. That goes along with the preaching of the Word of God. Don't go along and bite the pastor that's feeding you. Amen. Lord Jesus, if you got a problem with me, my friend, come to me about it. Don't go off and make a post about me and everything like that. Come to me. Let me work it out with you. That's what Scripture says. He said in Isaiah, I believe it's chapter 1, he said that he said, though your sins be as scarlet, I'll make them white as snow. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He said, let us come together in and agree. Let, let's come together in judgment. Let's get this thing under the blood. Let's get this thing taken care of. Don't go calling about me and talking about me behind my back because let me tell you something. You've got blood on your hands when you do that. When you go around yapping your mouth like a little lost puppy, you yapping your mouth about me. Let me tell you what happened. You are setting yourself up for the fall. I tell people all the time, don't lift me up on a pedestal. Honey, I fall fine all by myself. I don't need any help falling from anybody. I do a good job by myself, but let me tell you something. If you're going to do any lifting, lift me in prayer, not praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Lift me up before God in prayer, not praise. Praise belongs to him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. But if you're watching me and you're saying, Brother HR, I know that I've I've gotten lost or I'm backslid or I'm not where I want to be with God. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, Lord, I come to you a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross that God the Father raised you from the dead, and I am saved. Lord Jesus, wash me, cleanse me, fill me with your precious Holy Spirit, that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Sister Angel, I love you too. In Jesus' name, Brother John, I love you. God bless you. Amen. But let me explain something to y'all, my friends. Be encouraged, be excited because let me tell you what happened when you go and do that trial that you're going through and you feel like oh i'm stumbling but i ain't really falling let me tell you what's happening god's just polishing that stone that white stone and when you stand before god that white stone won't be gone amen glory to god i love you too sister angel god bless you all i love you I pray for healing. I pray deliverance. And Father, I pray that you'd fill everybody watching with the Holy Ghost and fire in Jesus' name. Amen. I love y'all. God bless you. Like, share, subscribe, and that bell notification for more videos just like this on YouTube. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.